And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today, today it's time to go to the fire planet. Before we do, let's just have a quick check up on a couple of things here that we've been, uh, we haven't really looked back at it a while. One is our heat spike down here in the uh, magma biome. It goes all the way to the end now. Temperature down this end is 1100 C. We've actually managed to drain, what, about 400 degrees of temperature out of here? Maybe more? Yeah, 500. This, uh, this temperature heat spike combined with those conveyor rails really moves heat efficiently. You notice it drops to about 900 degrees here, or 900 C, and then as you go back, it sort of hovers around there. It's very good at stabilizing the temperature and draining it reasonably evenly all the way along. And it's boiling our water convincingly. Our water tank, which is, um, yeah, that's a big water tank. <laughs> we don't have to expand it today, though, thankfully. One side piece I did in the background was uh, over here for our oxalate. This was a bit warm and was causing overheating in our rockets. So what I did was I installed a little cooling loop down here. So this down here has a bunch of super coolant running through it, and it chills this whole area down to, well, cold. Pretty cold. About 5 degrees or so. This means all our newer oxalate that we're producing is going to come out about 20C, which means it'll keep our rockets nice and cool. As well as that, we cool down the old oxalate, though that's going to take a little bit of time. We've also got some dirt that we've uh, stockpiled over here that we're going to cool down, and some steel as well. Because for the fire planet, we're going to need a lot of steel if we want to build a base there. Alright, but... They've changed the rockets, as in these new spacefarer modules, they can hold different things. However, we have to deconstruct our old ones before we can uh, reconstruct the new ones. So, uh, yeah, goodbye. There is about a ton of oxalite left in each one of these, so some of that's going to escape into the background of space, but, well, you know, things happen. Actually, where will that drop? Uh, it'll drop down there close enough to us. It'll, it'll be fine. Who cares if we lose a little bit? We've got plenty of oxalate in reserve. We'll build in a couple of new ones here, and let's see what these uh, these new updates have brought us. Hopefully we can make more efficient spacefarer modules. The inside here seems to have a couple of new inputs and outputs. We've got a liquid output port and a liquid input port up the top. Gas input, gas output down the bottom. We seem to be built into the walls by default now. You can't deconstruct them or do anything weird with them. They just seem to be a way to pull in and out liquids out of the surrounding rocket. Now, before, when I was using these rockets, I didn't bother putting anything else, but I didn't put in, bother putting liquid tanks on these. It just, or gas tanks, it felt like a waste. I'm not sure that this is going to change my opinion. Hmm. You know what, let's, let, let's have a play with the new toys and then, uh, then we'll make our decisions. Our first new toy comes under furniture in the shape of a ladder bed. All right, uh, you know what, make it out of, co actually, we'll make it out of something we've got a lot more of. Aluminum's fine. So, ladder beds go like that and it, doubles as a, both a ladder and a bed. We might be able to fit four duplicates in here. Hmm. You know what, let's, uh, let's, let's build these up first, see how they work out, maybe uh, see what we can squeeze in here, especially with the new toiletry system. When it comes under plumbing, they've got these new wall toilets. Empties directly onto the other side of the wall. Okay, so this is a plastic toilet and it basically can strap to the side of a wall. Uh, I think you need to have it on a floor though. So it needs to be on the floor. We could cram that on there if we put a wall tile below. That is very interesting because that would mean it would the toilet would only take up one space. At the same time, they've also changed hand sanitizers to only take up one space as well, reducing the amount of space we'd need to put in a bathroom facility. For example, we'd have the toilet there, hand sink there, and you're done. That means you can squeeze you can half the amount of space that your toiletry setup will take. Hmm. But we would need to put on a, a liquid tank on top of these rockets, and that's a problem. We've sort of maxed out what these rockets can do. This one over here, we could probably do it. In fact, let me do a little bit of playing around here. A liquid cargo canister, the uh, the smaller one, takes up three tiles of space. That means we could rip out three solar panels and stick one in. Over here, we're a little bit more limited, let's say, but we could spread out the trailblazer modules. There's things we could do, but I don't really see a need for it. Uh, hmm... But let's play around with this first. I want to see what happens where the uh, the sewage goes if we leave this on the ground. As a bit of an experiment, I was wondering if you could put the ladder beds uh, horizontally like this and they could hop across them, but no. It turns out they need to be attached to something underneath them. Uh, just curious. They do take up the exact same amount of space as normal beds, but being able to turn them into a ladder as well is convenient. So supposedly the dupes that are sleeping here when they, the ladders are used will get very irritable. So, hmm... Maybe we should put the bathroom on the ground floor and we have the rocket control station up there. But for the time being, let's just let's just, just have a little bit of a play around. I'm really curious to see how this works out. This took me a minute or two to figure out because this is the liquid output port, which is a bit confusing, but you have to actually go to the outside of the rocket. Turns out this uh, new system adds these two ports on the outside. This is the liquid input, this is the liquid output. However, when you're on the inside of the rocket, 
uh, sort of reverse. This is the output of what you put in. So we're putting in clean water here, which flows down here and goes right into the toilet. So toilet goes up and it takes or is it 2.5 kilos of water per use? Is it? Yeah, 2.5 kilos of water per use. And this gets interesting because that's one, two, three, four. That means there's four servings, there's four, 40 kilos of water waiting to flow into that toilet. That means there's an awful lot of backup toiletry uses, even if you just have a few pipe segments. And we can extend these on, there's, there's lots of things you could do. But what I'm thinking is, this is really good when you're doing round trips to places. Like if you're, say, doing round trips from here to one of these asteroid places to pull back resources, and you've just got the set rocket set on repeat, then all you have to do is set this up, and then when the rocket lands, more water gets put on board, and it's enough to keep the toilet running for the whole round trip. Very, very useful. This makes round tripping rockets so much handier. Because you can just live on what's in the pipe, and then when it lands again, pipe gets filled back up. You don't even have to touch the rocket. The moment the rocket lands, more water gets dumped in. Problem solved. As for output, it turns out the output goes out the side here. Whether or not they can use the toilet while it's on the ground, I'm not so sure. Uh, let's maybe fast forward this a bit and find out. I decided to do some play testing on the side on an actual uh, test save, and I've decided no, we are not good. Oh, what are you doing? Don't use the. T oh, damn it, they're, ne they're never going to wash their hands. You're going to get a case of food poisoning the more you go back home. You know that, right? And. Well. Uh, at least we know you can use these things even when you're landed. We'll just disable that building for now. We can also disable uh, duplicates using this when they're on the ground, but we do need to install a, was it, rocket control station. We'll worry about that in a minute. We'll start on the ground floor. We're going to build this in, and then uh, I think we can upgrade these to carry four duplicates at a time. We will have to carry a little liquid cargo module with our ship, but I think, yeah, I think we're going to upgrade to four dupes per car per uh, per rocket. Well, we're waiting for this to build up. I thought we'd cover just one of those little nice quirks about the game that's a, a fun way to speed things along. Sometimes you're going to want to delete modules and replace them with something else. However, yes, deconstructing things takes forever because people have to come along and deconstruct it, and they seem to lose track of things. Well, you can actually just deconstruct things instantly if you use the swap function. For example, we're going to swap this out for, say, liquid oxidizer tank. Grant. That will queue that up there, but then we're going to cancel the building of it, and boom, it's gone. So we'll swap this one out for, oh, we'll say a artifact transport module. We'll swap you out there, but then we'll cancel building it, and it's gone. You can instantly delete things by swapping them for something, and then cancelling the building of whatever you swapped it out for. So same again, artifact transport module, and then if we just hit cancel, it's gone again. Yeah, but we're going to replicate this rocket to look exactly like this one. We're going to stick in a liquid cargo tank, a trailblazer module, and one solar panel on each, and one battery. They're not going to be very power efficient, unfortunately. It's just uh, we can't squeeze on anymore, especially if we're putting four duplicates in here. Now, uh, let's, let's uh, change this slightly. I will try to explain my reasoning behind why I'm going to go with this rocking, rocket design. It all comes down to what you have to put in. And what you have to put in is you have to put in an atmosphere checkpoint and you can't put it in tight up against the door here. If you try and put it there, it won't work. They won't switch into their atmosphere. Here they just teleport. So in that case, we're going to put our atmosphere checkpoint right there. And since we're carrying four duplicates and we want this to be something we can use on other planets, we have to put in four atmosphere docks, which puts all four of them there. Now, for the time being, we're going to cancel the checkpoint. We don't want people dropping their suits when they come in here just yet because we're not going to have any oxygen to put in these just yet. So that gives us those four. And we've no way of avoiding those. We have to put those in. At the same point, well, I'll cover the extra space we've got over here. There's there's three tiles of space that we haven't put anything in, but we'll get back to that. Over here is where we're going to put in our dining tables. So we're going to go in and go into furniture, and we're going to go and grab ourselves some mess tables. In fact, we're going to make these out of steel, just in case we ever need to repair them or turn them into something else. So that's four dining tables right there. And that gives us three tiles of space above them. We'll find uses for those three tiles of space, not just yet. However, I am going to splurge here and we're going to invest in a door. We're going to put a door right above here because that will turn this entire area into a mess hall and give us a plus three morale bonus, which will be very useful. But this tile here, this tile here, here, and these three tiles here, we have uses for all of these. Just every tile is sacred when it comes to a rocket build. So next up, we are going to need a source of power. Problem is, our external solar panel is not going to be good enough, and especially with the changes they've made to um, solar on planets in general. So we're definitely going to need a source of power to charge up our suits and make sure we can still continue to get in and out of the rocket. So, manual generator it is. 
As well as that, we're going to need a gas pump. Gas pump's going to be required to fill up these atmosphere ducts. And the best place to put it is right here above the door because this is a non-solid surface. So we can't really place anything else above the door. Might as well use this for the gas pump. We don't want to waste a single tile if we can help it. Now, toilets are put in over there. So we've got the hand sanitizer and the wall toilet. However, that wall toilet is going to need a liquid input, right? So we're going to have to get into the rocketry section and we're going to have liquid output filter. Allows liquids to be drawn from the rocket storage. We're going to have a water tank attached to the rocket and that water tank is going to have a liquid pipe that goes up there. Actually, hmm. I've just realized something. We should make that an insulated pipe. We don't know what kind of water we're going to be bringing in, so we've got ceramics. Yeah, insulated liquid pipe going up to the uh, wall toilet. Done. All right, with that done, we also need to put in sleeping, and that allows us to use some of the new beds. So let's grab our ladder beds here, and we're going to put one there, 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 and there. That allows us to put in four beds right there. That, that is the key sp piece of space saving. We have to put these tiles above the atmosphere docks. These atmosphere docks have to be here, so this block right here that is just perfection that allows us to squeeze in so much in so little space and the only reason we're getting four uh four dupes onto a single rocket all right I'll let, I'll let all this building catch up and then we'll move on to the next section uh, as they finish those off let's go check under power uh, the problem here is we're going to need to be able to draw battery power and output power so we need a power outlet fitting and that needs to touch a wall segment oh that is not the rotate button all right, so we're going to put that right there. We're going to make everything here in here out of steel. So that's going to go right there. And then for power itself, we'll grab a conductive wire. And you know what? More steel. This is going to be an all steel rocket. That needs to go up there. And boom. Actually, we can see ourselves a little bit of if we route this the correct direction. Now, we're going to have to put that across to there because we need to power that water output. At the same time, we're going to have to put one down to this. So there we go. That should power everything that we need in here for now. As well as that, we're going to need a place to put the rocket control section. Now you notice here, since there's a two-tile gap here, dupes can stand here, and since there's a two-tile gap here, they can jump up to this section. And that means they can also stand here, jump up two tiles and get up here. Also, there's ladders there on the beds, but they shouldn't use those unless they need to get into bed. Uh, in the top bank bunk sort of thing. So that means we get our rocketry section, and since this is going to be the least used, we'll put that there in the corner. And that leaves us a couple of spare tiles. These four tiles here are sort of free, so what we're going to use these for is food, basically. We're going to stick our food storage right there, and then we're going to have one extra storage box. We are going to put in a storage bin. In fact, we're going to make that storage bin right there. Extra storage bin for the win. All right, once that's done, things start to get a little bit more complicated. Next up, we're going to have to go with filling the Atmos suit docks. Now, oh, actually, oxygen in general is going to all be provided by the storage bin full of oxalite. You can't really get away from this. It's just so efficient. It's almost impossible not to do it this way. Also, reloading. If you have a gas canister attached to your rocket, that should really only be for going out to uh, patches on the star map. If, if you want a reusable rocket that goes out to the star map and comes back, then yes, you want to use tanks on your system, on your rocket, to keep your thing oxygenated and liquided up in between missions because it's just going to go out, come back, reload, and go off and do it again. However, we're going to a fire planet, and we want a rocket we can live on. That's our plan. So we're trying to make a livable rocket. That's what we're trying to design here. So in that instance, we're going to want to use this gas here and dump it into our atmosuit ducts. However, there's carbon dioxide in here. Remember, the dupes are going to be breeding out that carbon dioxide, and we need some way of filtering that so it doesn't go into our atmosuit ducts. For that, powerless gas filter. We'll stick in one there, and this is going to be a loop we've primed with oxygen. One gram of oxygen will rotate around here just forever and ever and ever. And we will say bridge on the oxygen like this. So any new gases will come in here. If it's carbon dioxide, it won't be able to get across because there's already oxygen in this piping system, and you can't have two gases of, the sa of different types in the same pipe segment. So the carbon dioxide will go, no, I can't get across. There's something on the other side blocking me. And that will get sent off over here. We'll dispose of that in a minute. Uh, but the overflow, as in if 500 grams of oxygen comes down the pipe, it'll hop across here. 501 grams will get to here. Only one gram will be allowed through because this is a powerless gas filter, remember? That means all the overflow oxygen, that all those 500 grams are going to come across here. And actually, hmm, this is where it gets a little complicated. You see, what happens here is we need a space to put an atmosensor. So we're going to put that atmosensor right here in that tile. 
and then we're going to use this very simple setup that I've been using for a while. This thing has been around since before automation was really a thing, but it still has its uses. What's going to happen is the oxygen is going to come down here, hop across here, and then go down and get dumped into the atmosphere docks. But eventually these atmosphere docks are going to be full, which is good, right? That That's good, but we want a signal to let us know that yes, they're full. So once this oxygen backs up all the way up to here, it will back up in this system, back up in this system, and then it will back up to here, and then that will overflow to this pipe right here. So once this is all full and all the way backed up, it'll eventually back up to this pipe segment right there, which is where we're going to put an automation sensor. Uh, that is a, going to be a gas pipe element sensor that's going to detect that, hey, there's oxygen in here. Once it detects the oxygen, it's going to send an automation signal to shut off the gas pump. And we'll cover more as to why we're doing that in a minute. But uh, before we put in that automation, let's grab this. This is where the other section comes in. We're going to put a gas vent right there. So any of the gases, any of the oxygen that doesn't go down here, as in the carbon dioxide, that's going to get sent across here and dumped on top of the, uh, the oxide container. The reason we have the gas output here is because any gases that end up on top of the storage container that are less than, say, about 1.8 kilos will just get overwritten. So we can destroy the carbon dioxide without having to do anything else. This makes our life so much easier, saves us a bunch of space, and this means this is one of the reasons we're able to fit so many duplicates in here. But finally, I know this is going to get really confusing, but once, we, once we've got this started and running, it'll make a, an awful lot more sense. You can actually watch it in action. This automation sensor is going to come down here, say, yeah, we're detecting oxygen, then it's going to get reversed. So once it detects oxygen, it will send an on signal, which will get switched to an off signal, which will turn off the gas pump. Whew. Okay, and that is those two spaces used and those three spaces over there used. In fact, we have zero spaces left to use in the rocket now. It is completely full. It is done. There's nothing more we can cram. Well, theoretically, we could. We could delete these four tiles here and put in, or delete these two here and put in something else. Well, once we've got the food and such on board. But I think I think this, this, this should work. And here is this system in action. Oxygen comes across here, gets shunted down. See the way there's that one gram going through that? That's because we've set this sucker to one gram. So all the excess overflow oxygen gets dumped out here and gets sent across into this section. Now, let's actually just sever this for the moment to demonstrate the shutoff functionality. And that gas backs up along there, it backs up along there, and then that's going to hit that section. And when it does, it flips the gas pump off. So once the all the system is full, we stop pumping because otherwise we're just wasting power. There's no point wasting power while it's running because remember we have limited battery power, we've limited solar power, and we don't want our duplicates running on this uh, wheel all the time. This way we're able to turn off the gas pump when all of these are full and it turns back on afterwards because as you can see, the moment we start the gas is flowing again, the gas pump kicks in. Just a simple, efficient way of also filtering out the carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is gone, we get ourselves a full set of uh, atmosphere docks, Everything just works out nice and cleanly. Now all we have to do is we have to put in the uh, the atmosphere atmosphere checkpoint, and once that's done, there are literally zero unoccupied tiles in this entire rocket. Every single tile is full, even the heads above our duplicates where they're dining. This is the only ladder segment. There's one ladder segment there, so they can get up to that section. That's the only real thing I consider a waste in this build. Well, that and that storage bin that shouldn't really need to be there. Also, when you deconstruct a pipe or gas uh, pipe up here, it, it leaves the raw materials on top. That is. Uh, yeah, a little bit annoying. I wish I could sweep those away, not gonna lie. But that is going to be the new rocket design. How well it works, mm, we'll have to see. You know what, let's set this to grounded so that no one will try using these things. And then we will set this to enable building. Remind me to take it off grounded when, it, well, once it launches, that'll activate again. And there we go, that is our new rocket design. Uh, on the outside here, we have plugged in the water. Where is it? Yeah, we have plugged in the water there, so that is slowly filling up with water. Well, that's literally we're up to five tons of water. This thing can hold nine tons of of, uh, of water in it. I did a quick bit of math here, and assuming this thing uses two two and a half kilos of water per cycle per duplicate, and each duplicate uses it once per cycle, they don't get food poisoning or anything. That means four duplicates will take nine hundred cycles to drain a full water tank. So it's nine hundred cycles of toiletry facility is taken care of with that one water tank. We'll, we'll run out of oxalate or food long before that point. So I think we're good on the toiletry front. This, uh, th this, I I'm actually quite fond of this rocket. Let's see how it works out. One thing though, I am going to set up power plugging into these. Reason being, yeah, it's going to take a while for those atmosphere docks to fill up. Each one needs 200 kilos of oxygen apiece, and I have to replicate this design over here in this space fair module as well. So give me a few minutes there while I set up the power, move everything across, get our second ro rocket going before we head off to uh, the fire planet. We have got both of them completed, full, ready to go. Well, not quite ready to go. 
You'll see here we've put in 20 reed fibre on each one of these. Uh, the reason for this is we want to have something to repair the suits with while they're abroad. And then we'll just go over to this one and do the same thing. Now we also want to have some materials for building on the other end, so let's just go, go get two extra things. First we're going to get some raw minerals and put in some igneous rock. You can always, you can always find a use for some igneous rock. Uh, let's just say about, go oh, 10 tons should be more than sufficient for our needs. I think uh, we'll do the same thing over here. Done. Both of them maxed out on igneous rock. Then in that case we want to put in one last thing, and since we're going to a fire planet, we're going to need a lot of it. Oh, actually wait, glass. Yes, I think we will go with one ton of glass in each one of these. Uh, it's just the reason for glass is we can throw down some solar panels and it just cuts down on our power problems by quite a bit when we get there. And glass delivered. Next up, we're going to want steel. Uh, steel though, we're going to want a lot of steel. Like an awful, awful, awful lot of steel. 20 tons of steel will be going on each rocket because that's... You know, it, it's the fire planet. We're going to need a lot of steel because anything else we bring will simply melt. Then the final piece, Atmosuit checkpoints. After that, we're going to have to choose our crew. We're going to need, we're going to have eight duplicates, so it should make it an awful lot faster to build on the other end. Uh, storage bin is full. There's 20 tons of oxalite in there. 20 tons of oxalite on the other rocket, and both the rockets are full of water. So this tank here is 9 tonnes of water, over here 9 tonnes of water. We can actually find some uses for that water on the other end maybe if we want to run a steam turbine or something like that. Damn it, I forgot plastic. Hmm. You know what, we can fire over the plastic if we need some. It'll be fine. We are ready to rock and roll. Alright, duplicates are loading up now. Once they're all on board and the launch checklist is complete, we're going to launch them both at the same time because it would be nice to do that. And I think we are... Oh, almost done. We are sending... Eight duplicates. This is going to be a very, very duplicate heavy trip. We've got Chief Multihat, K, Furious George, Sinatrax, Sinatro, Kayin, Joel Seguin, and Matthew Clark. And I think they're all on board. And yeah, I'll actually have to put deliver suit, deliver suit, and deliver suit here so they can put those, uh, install those in. Oh, one other thing. In the background, we have installed an awful lot of those pixel packs. Namely because they just give a massive decor boost. Look at that, 120. They're just going to get maximum decor bonus from staying inside this rocket. And it's going to be a long journey, so let's get them off the ground so they can start using the bathrooms. We, we don't want them to do anything with the ground. Or uh, do anything on the ground, because that would mess with oxygen production. All right, chucks away. There we go. Nuclear power to the rescue. you got to love the range on these things. It makes life so much simpler. Power will be a little bit wonky on these uh, new designs, but whatever. And as for our rad production down here, we're up to 10,000, which is, uh, yeah, that's good. All right, while we're waiting for those rockets to go over, let's have a quick look at Modilius and see how we're doing on fish production. We are up to 247 fish in there. 247? Okay, well, that's a lot. That, that's a lot of fish. That one up there, though, what are you doing? You're falling? You don't look like you're falling. You're just ignoring gravity. Stop. It, there you go. Yeah, I think when you pause the game, it finally realizes it's, it should stop ignoring gravity and just fall in. Um, not really producing an awful lot of resin, though, even with all those, uh, even all those fish. Down here, Bamily production is... Yeah, it's pretty good. We've we, we got a lot of Bamilies going on. We've even managed to mutate enough to put in a bunch of lysy ones, but it's barely producing enough food to keep the duplicate fed. Never mind start feeding it to the tree. We're still actually short four. Uh, all the rest have been planted, yeah, so we're still short four, but we don't even need that many. We've got two, four, uh, six, eight, ten, twelve, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We've got sixteen planted. It only takes about twelve to keep the duplicate alive. So we've got some spare food on hand, just in case we ever need it. Though, I think they're, yeah, I think they're still doing the birdie sledge for now. Yeah, and how is Aku's home planet going? Well, Aku still seems, yep, just as happy as always. And water-wise, oh wow, we've actually managed to decrease the water level quite substantially already. Look at that. Right. That is a lot of bristle blossoms. This, uh, oh, you know what? There's a, a few things going on here. One, calorie wise, how much have we produced? We've got 4.9 4 million, almost 5 million bristle berries. That's, that's, that's a decent amount of bristle. We haven't even cooked them up yet. We're going to get a, well, never mind. Oh, yeah, down here, all of these are deep frozen. Now, you'll see the odd stack there that are not completely fresh. That's because. Uh, we have this over here. Sometimes they'll drop their berry sledge here, or they'll try and eat the bristle berries, then they'll drop them here because they get called away for some reason. This auto sweeper picks it up and dumps it back in, and it gets sent back down to be refrozen. Also, anything sitting on top of these tiles ends up frozen, so it doesn't matter if they're not completely frozen, deep frozen by the time they get to the end. This thing is minus 48 or 
Oh god, it's, it's, it's very low temperature, let's just say. It's well below the minus 18 required. So the longer these things are on it, the more their temperature goes down, even though they're in a vacuum. This has been working out beautifully. And with that out of the way, yeah, let's uh, let's wait till our rockets get to Tostibo. Tostabo? Tostibo? It's Tostibo. Once we get into orbit, we can pick the people who are going to get launched down to the planet's surface. We can actually see it already, it seems, from a distance. So this is what the planet looks like. This looks completely different to the last time I was here. On the last version I went through, there was like just raw magma touching the surface and you, you had to you could barely find anywhere to land and then there was just pools of magma all over the place and you take a, a wrong misstep and you've scalded your dupes. Here they've sealed everything in an abyssalite. Hmm. That seems not nearly as dangerous or as fun. But okay, we've got a little you know, I think we'll land up here and we'll dig down here. That will keep the exhaust away from where we want to land. Because if we were taking off on top of where our entrance is, the gases will get in there and we want to prevent heat transfer as much as possible with this sort of thing. We have dropped an atmosuit on the, the ground for Snatrack, namely because they have the highest construction skill in this module. And then on the other end, we've got Joel and they've... Joel, what are you doing? Mm. I told Joel to get into that suit, but it seems they're not motivated. Okay, go on, put it on. Come on. Boom. Okay, so we got Joel in there. Hmm. Damn it, they keep undocking. Okay, we'll launch Joel first. Sinatra can follow in a second. I think we better launch Joel before they... Uh, put the suit away again. To do that, we'll just go here, select Trailblazer module, uh, Joel, yeah, you're getting in, buddy. And we are going to deploy you to the planet's surface. Uh, we will deploy you over here, I suppose. Uh, perfect, view the interior and they vanish. Perfect, wait, did they actually exit out that door to get into the Trailblazer? Hmm, no, I'm not risking it. I'm not going to test it here because if we do and it doesn't work, uh, Sinatrek will end up suffocating and dying. That would be bad. So let's not. Let's just undock the suit and get to put it on again. One module down, second module in bad. We will immediately deconstruct that one. Why does it say building menu cargo lander? Now, but from the notes, according to the notes, there's a new animation for the... Where's the lander? Come on. There's supposed to be a new animation for it landing. Oh... Buggery. Okay, one moment. Looks like we lost a little time. No problems. We'll get the landers down again and set up in no time. Let's see what this animation looks like. Come on. Where's my trailblazer? Oh, it actually has thrusters and everything. Okay, that is pretty cool. Uh, I gotta go land the other person. Give me a minute. First thing to do, deconstruct this trailblazer module. Joel, get on that. Your construction skill is pretty incredible at 15. You'll get through that in no time. It gives us 400 steel. Here comes the second one now. Come on, get out. Perfect, yes, it's a trick as well. And they've still got glitched gear. They can't actually see their heads, or the helmets don't show up when they're like that. Ah, fine. Uh, rocketry. Quick, let's get ourselves down a rocket platform. Now, I didn't want to put it down here because the moment we start digging there, the gases would get in. So maybe... Hmm. Actually, here is fine. All right, dupes get on it. It doesn't actually matter which rocket we land, namely because, well, they all have the basic materials we're going to need. But yeah, that is pretty cool. They're also going to have the igneous rock on board, which will allow them to build the ladder segments to escape the rocket. Also, remind me to add these back as crew. These are no longer assigned as crew. The moment you send those landers down, where's the, where's my animation? What you doing? Okay, that's uh, kind of annoying. Well, at least we have a icy cold rocket launching landing pad. All right, uh, let's let everyone out. We'll just queue up a bunch of igneous rock ladders and let's see what everyone inside is looking like. Come on, move it, move it, move it. Yeah, perfect timing, Kay. The moment we get to the planet, you're going to just, yeah, mark your territory all over it. That's just, yeah, classic duplicate behavior. Though the, uh, the actual polluted water doesn't fall out. That would be kind of nice if it did. And... Oh, god damn it, this engine is doing its thing. I think we may have to launch this and land it again to stop it from doing that. Uh, but, mm, no, we need Sinatra to have uh, somewhere to stay as well. So the moment this is done, we are going to put ourselves down another one of these right about there. Should be perfect. And also, we're going to need a ladder system for that as well. And there, and then we can land our second rocket there when the time comes. All right, that second rocket down. Uh, the moment that's dead, we're going to launch this one back into orbit so we can hopefully get rid of that annoying glitch. There's a bug where... Oh, 
It's glitched out twice. This second rocket, what's the bet? It's going to be full of radiation as well. Yeah, uh, I don't know what caused that. You know what? I think the quickest and fastest way to get rid of this, uh, I'm just going to save and reload the game. One quick restart later, and our radiation levels are back to not horrifically murdering everyone. Uh, our duplicates are now stored inside there safely, and we've set it up so that the door permissions will only allow the four duplicates who are in each rocket to get in and out of their rockets. Now let's go down here and have a look. Oh, okay. Awkward. Let me think for a second. What I want to do is make... Okay, this is going to sound dumb. A sub... magma rocket silo. Right? <laughs> okay. Now I know that sounds crazy, but what I want to do is basically sort of build, say, a rocket silo in here and then have it covered in magma at the top. And then when you open it up, the magma falls in and then we pump it back out and on top of the silo again. So you could basically hide the silo under magma. I'm not even sure if it's possible, but that's what I'd like to do. I think the plan will be we'll have to dig down here first and we're going to have to core out this area. This is probably our best bet to start. We could core out this section and turn this into our silo. So now we just got to dig down through here and then, ooh, damn it, there's neutronium right there. Ooh, let me come up with a plan. Considering the layout of that neutronium, I think our best bet is to dig straight down through here using, well, using the normal door method. In fact, let's get rid of these. Uh, we're going to have to make those out of obsidian once we get down a bit. would prefer to use the local materials as much as possible. And then we're going to have to dig across sideways here to get into this area. There's also a bunch of niobium we're going to want to get into. Oh, damn, there's a volcano. No, no, we can, we can still fit the silo in there, probably. Worst case scenario, we could do it this side, but I'd prefer not to. I want to be able to put the magma on top, and there's not really... Mm, I don't think there's enough room to do it that way, especially with this here. All right, let's get started. It's time to dig. A couple of things we might want to do while we're here is, first off, set up power. The more power we have, the better, as well as that, we're going to need to set up a, an, no, a station to repair our atmos suits. I'm pretty sure some of them are already going to degrade or pretty close. Uh, what are you doing on the... Why are you on the ground? Durability is at 60%. Nope, 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 nope. Deliver that suit right back right now. How is our other ship looking? Uh, there's one of you left in there in one suit. Okay, so that's fine for now, but I'm thinking once we get these solar panels up and running, we're going to uh, use that to power ourselves a suit production facility. That should cut down on our people running on wheels for quite some time. Excellent. Uh, we're also going to dump a bunch of steel down here. We're going to be needing a lot of steel doors to barrel all the way down. In fact, there's no real raw resources here. We might want to start firing stuff over with a cannon. You know, I'm beginning to think that maybe having eight duplicates on this planet is not really that necessary, considering how slow it's going to be to get everything sorted. But it's fine. We made our commitment, and these rockets do seem to be working out quite well. We check gas pressures in here. Let's see what's going on. Yeah, there's only that little blob of gas left. Gas pressure in here is fine. Atmos suit filling has gone on perfectly. Let's see the other side. Yep. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I'm I'm actually quite happy with this new design. I think it will serve us well, though it'll take about 50 cycles or so before I'll know for sure. With ourselves basically set up with enough solar that we don't have to worry about running on the wheel, that frees up our duplicates to come down here and start working on the tunnel. Uh, we're going to use the same trick as before and just, well, drill through mechanized airlocks. You can build through mechanized airlocks without opening them, which allows us to push all the magma out of the way. I still remember when I discovered this, realizing, yes, drilling through magma, it actually turns out it's super easy. All you have to do is, you know, just use doors. Only works on the downward orientation, though. You can't do this side to side. But hey, I'll do whatever works. Now, uh, you put that there, and we'll keep with our downwards trekking. They're also able to build diagonally out and build those airflow tiles. Uh, we're going to destroy some magma, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, let's keep going. After we travel down a bit, there's... Oh, oh no. Pressure damage. That's that's bad. And we might want to prioritize repairing that. Uh, once we crush that last piece of magma, though, that'll stop being a problem. Or just replace the whole thing with an airflow tile. Why not? It, it, it makes more sense that way. Actually, I think we can... Yeah, we can deconstruct that airflow tile in to replace it, and then we'll just squish that out and destroy that tile with... Ooh. That. Damn it. Make that an emergency. It's starting to do pressure damage to that tile. Come on. Quickly. There you go. Just finish it. There you go. <sighs> okay, that was just an annoyance. But... One thing I've noticed is uh, this planet is a little bit bigger than I thought. This goes down a fair chunk further. There's a whole pool of magma down here. Now, what I'm trying to figure out is where to put our rocket silo. It's got to be over this side, though, right? I mean, theoretically, we could put it this side now. Hmm. 
you know what, I'm going to have to have a good think about it, but we're, we're over time for today already, so let me think about this in the background. I'm thinking maybe a rocket silo here or here, and then have the top of it covered in magma. After it opens the doors, the magma pours down, and we pump it out using door pumps so that it covers it back over the top. I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well enough, but, but we'll see. Maybe we can get a sub-magma rocket launch facility, though getting people in and out could be a bit toasty. Anyway, well, yeah, hope you enjoyed, and good luck. Mm -hmm.